this? Do you hear me? So I wasn't expecting that much for the last time. We can go. Yeah, I can do it at the community here. Okay, that doesn't work either. So, uh, let's start very quickly. So, my name is Fernand Decon. You can hear I'm speaking French usually. So, uh, I'm tired, so uh, if you don't understand some uh, of my bad English, just let me know. So I'm working for Procona, I'm a senior architect, I do my skills since a lot of time. And uh, which is fun is that uh, I started uh, to, um, to use Galera uh, since February 2010 when I met Seppo here in Fosdem. So you can uh, see nice stuff in Fosdem. And uh, I started with it. So today the talk won't be too technical. And, uh, but um, who here is using Galera? Okay. With MariaDB, with MySQL community, with Capona. Okay, okay, that's good. So what I will show you now is valid for all of them. Okay, so it's about Galera and how Galera works. Who thinks it's a bit magic and doesn't know how it works? <laughs> so I will try to explain you that magic today. Uh, I won't explain everything about uh, what's easy, I would say. We'll go in really where it's tricky. So the certification, for example. This is where uh, it's more a bit complicated and I want to, uh, to explain it. But for the people who doesn't know Galera at all, uh, usually when we talk about uh, MySQL replication, we have a master and a slave, right? So this is uh, end stream between uh, the master and the slave, and this is what we call server-centric replication. We have a master and a slave, they have, they have a role, right? With Galera, here it's different, we are data-centric, so we don't care about the role of the server, uh, but we care about the data. So we don't try to uh, cut filters like, oh, I don't want to, to uh, replicate this table or this database. Don't play with that, it won't work. So you have data everywhere and you see it like one data, right? You can, you don't care about if they are out of sync or not, it will worry uh, for, uh, for you and you can write everywhere, normally, depending on the workload, but it works. Something which is, which is nice also is that on a, on a database you write in multiple threads, so you don't have only one client that writes, and you can also apply them in multiple threads uh, on the other uh, nodes. The threads are not the same. You have to define that end here, right? But you can do it. By default, it will work. You can make more. So what's the replication, in fact? Replication is to deliver the right set um, that are uh, going to the nodes um, to all the nodes in the cluster. So you have a right set transaction, and you need to deliver it to the other nodes. And uh, all the other nodes acknowledge they got the right set. Then they generate, so the cluster generate a GTID that will be a global and that will be used to order these transactions. And the cost, it's a road trip latency to the furthest node. So if you have nodes, would say, let's say in Europe and one in Japan, the speed of your cluster will be the speed to reach that node in Japan and come back. Okay, so what shall we say? Oh, it was fast, we were happy with this, we just moved one node in Japan and oh, uh, it's very slow, our application is slow. It's normal, because the latency there is much higher, right? So, uh, the GTID is serialized, but you can anyhow, uh, anyway write um, in the, and replicate in parallel. So, because they communicate. So, let's talk about these GTIDs. So, they are not the same as 5.6 asynchronous GTIDs, but they look the same. Oops, this is one GTID. So, nothing special about it. And these uh, GTIDs, they will ensure that uh, all the members are consistent uh, with each other. Right, so when they join, they say, oh, this is the GTID I have, or uh, I was to the GTID, or this is my current GTID, what's the status of the cluster? And then we know where we are in the in terms of, uh, of data, right? So when a node joins the cluster, 
we check the GTAD and we say, oh, we are missing some transaction or not. And if they are missing some transaction, we're going to give him uh, the data to that field. <coughs> so when we stop all the nodes, we can use the GTAD also to compare them. So where is my most accurate node, right? And we will we use the, we use the GTAD to see that also. So ISGTAD means the most recent uh, data uh, up-to-date server or nodes. And uh, so it's better to always restart. So if you stop all your nodes, check first which GTAD is the highest, and then restart from it, and bootstrap your cursor from that node. Depending on what version of whatever you, you are using, this is automatic uh, in, some, uh, in some version and the new version. Of it. So some more about GTAD. So this is what it looks like. And the GTAD, in fact, represent the dataset ID. Right? So we have here dataset ID or the cluster ID, same everywhere on all the nodes, like uh, they said uh, this morning in a uh, MySQL 5.7 Go publication. And then we have this transaction number, right? So we know, okay, this is the transaction we have done. And every time we do a transaction, we, have, we increment this, uh, uh, this counter here. So if we compare them, they look the same, right? But this is the data set cluster ID. In uh, five six, this is the server ID. The, so every server will have their own uh, uh, GTID. This part of the server ID of the GTID. This is the data change inside of the cluster, and this is the transaction that are processed for that server, right? So in five six, GTA, we write data, so we increase, and when we promote a new master, so it's another node. So the, it's another ID here, and that starts processing transactions. So we have changed, and we can see it from there. In Galera, let's say we write always on the same node, then it's another node that uh, gets the rights. Nothing changed. We just increase. Okay? So this is the big difference between uh, these two. So how do we, how do we assign this GTAD? So the, the UID part, it's 188 bits. And it, let's say it's completely random. Um, and there it's, uh, yeah, you should uh, use the MAC address and stuff, which is not really the case. You can find a uh, lot, I put here on uh, this uh, GIST some information related to the code, so where it's generated if you want to see. But let's take it's random. So there is nothing that uh, uh, you don't take control of it, I would say. The sequence number, this is a 64 bit. Uh, um, and it's generated during the replication itself. And it's the group replication. So when you do something and you write, they communicate together and they decide what will be the next uh, sequence number. And for doing that, they use uh, an algorithm, which is uh, called Totem Single Ring Ordering Protocol. <coughs> I cannot explain everything in that time on what's inside of it, but this is how they decide what will be the next GTAD. So just Google for it, and you will, f or in Wikipedia, and you will find really uh, some white papers on how that that works. So replication roles. Remember, I said, okay, we don't care about who is the master, who is the slave, because we can write everywhere, and everybody gets the reads. But uh, within the cluster, so all the nodes are equal. But we also sometimes discuss about, or if you check the forums or the bugs about the master node. The master node means the node where we were, the application was connecting and write data. So, when, so you can switch of them, but for one transaction, we're gonna write somewhere, and this is the master node. So this is where we're gonna commit the, the transaction, and the slave node, it's the other node that will receive the transaction, okay? So this is, even in Galera, we also say master and slave. But this is just for a given transaction, not for uh, the server I itself, right? So uh, this has to be very clear. And uh, because sometimes people insert uh, bugs and then we discuss that, yeah, w w which node was the master? Uh, none, because I'm uh, doing a secret application, I don't have master. <laughs> yeah, but for your uh, the transaction, there was one master. So which node did you roll stuff? Right? So. Uh, yeah, and what's a write set? Because I always say a transaction write set. 
is just the term in Galera for a transaction. It's one or more row-based re replication event. The bin log format has to be row in the Galera, and so this is this kind of event. So the right set is this RBR uh, payload. It's a bit block box in Galera. And we also need replication keys, that the master node will generate that. And these replication keys, <coughs> we have the primary keys. So if you remember, or if you are using Galera for a long time already, at the beginning, if you not had key, it was very bad. You should have the, the uh, primary keys. So table without primary keys at the very early, uh, let's say, age of Galera, you could not even work. So primary keys, unique keys, foreign keys, table name, and schema name, all of these together will be part of the right set to be able to make this certification to see if there is conflict in the data we are writing, right? So, uh, and in the new version, if you don't have these keys, it, will, it can generate for you. But it's always preferable to, uh, to have uh, primary keys. <coughs> All INODB best practices are still valid and much more valid in Galera than in uh, INODB itself. So the keys are shared exclusive and this is what we use to make the, the certification possible. So we say replications. For us, what's replication? It's I write data somewhere and gets somewhere else committed. <laughs> oh, I'm happy this is replication. But replication, uh, when we talk about a synchronous replication, it's a bit more. Because we can split this replication in several steps or phases. And the first one is apply. So we need to apply the change. So the, the, the data itself, then we need to replicate it, we need to certify, and we need to commit. And this order can be different depending on what's the role for that transaction. And I will show you, uh, for example, on the master, so the, the machine where you, the, the server that gets the, the transaction to be done, it applies. So you modify rows, it modifies the rows, then it will sense the replication, the replicate to all Giller nodes, then certification happen, and then if certification pass, it commits. On, this, on the slave, it gets the data first, then it certifies, and if certification pass, it will make the change and commit. <laughs> so this is different. And what is then the certification? I go a bit fast, we can discuss later uh, as there is nobody after me, but I would like at least to, to go through the slides. So what's the certification? The certification is just answering this main question. Can this right be applied on the machine? I am trying to do the certification. So if I can apply, so if there is, there is no conflict, then yes, certification pass. If there is something that blocks me to write that data on the node, then certification fail. We're gonna see that uh, after. But also, so, and how, what do I need to check? I need to check the data, and also based on the unapplied earlier transaction on the master. So it could happen, so when I do the certification, that there is some still transactions that are in the queue that are not yet applied, and I need to verify there too. Because depending on the speed of the nodes, I need to verify all that to be able to make this certification happen. So uh, when there is a conflict, the conflict should always come from another node. So that's why, depending on your workload, if you have a data, one table or one record, you always change. Your application always change the same record. Then we will tell you, okay, uh, Galera is maybe not good for you, or at least not to write on all the machine at the same time. You need to write only on one node, and if that node crash, write on another node. Because there will have too many conflicts because you will write on all the nodes uh, at the same data everywhere, there will conflict. Certification will happen on every node and is the, the deterministic on every node. Here, the results are not reported to the cluster. So this is, I don't know if Thiago is here, yeah. Before you said, oh, we write and we wait that uh, they get before we could, uh, we could commit it. There is no communication system. Okay, okay. Because, uh, that's also, okay, so here is also the thing. So 
we don't, so we send the data when we know the data it's arrived to the slave or to, let's say to the, to the other nodes, then we don't care about them anymore. It's enough. So if they certify or not, we don't care. It's, it's up to them. I will show you that, I will explain you that. If it works, so if certification pass, we go in a queue, right? And the commit works, uh, will, uh, will be done on the master. If it fails, we have to drop the transaction. And on the master, we give a deadlock. If it's not a real deadlock, it's deadlock that mostly happen after we commit, uh, because, and that's where the application needs to be able to do that, so to, to when it commits, it gets a deadlock, and deal with that, because it's the only way we can discuss with the uh, return that certification failed without changing all the MySQL protocol. And the certification is serialized by GTID. The certification has a cost, and the cost for it is the, the amount of keys or the amount of rows. So if you have, uh, let's say, the, the, by default you're limited in one gig, and you can go to two gigabytes of changes, but you can, you can understand that if you have always to pass the, and certify all these two gigabytes of data, it could be a, a lot of work. Apply. Uh, is done on slave nodes after certification. They are parallelized. If the reserve slave threads is bigger than one, not the default. And if there are no other uh, right set that could conflict uh, with it that are being applied. The cost is also the size of the transaction. So that's why if you have large transaction, it's very bad for uh, Galera when you write everywhere because then you will have more conflict happening. And this is where you try to not to do. So on the local <laughs> node, we will, if uh, the apply doesn't work, we will have a, a brute force abort. And uh, I will explain you uh, what it is just after. So when we commit, so this action is just writing the data, committing like the normal NODD commit and uh, like uh, flush local transaction commit and, and it's done, okay? We serialize also that uh, by the GTID. And this is done by the applier threads on the slave and on the client thread on the master, okay? So now I will show you some, uh, uh, some graph on how it works. We dot a commit, what happens is we do a change on uh, one node, it replicates, right? Then it's certified, and here what you can already see is this, this is the only synchronous, when we say it's synchronous replication, yes, replication is synchronous. But the commit and certification is not synchronous. It will happen at a different time. We try to make it as fast as possible, but it's not true. It, it, it could take time here in between because it, we don't know the load of the other nodes and we don't care, in fact. Of course, if you have a node that is lagging, you will see later, it will cause that all your cluster will be lagging at a certain point. But you can see applying and um, finally the commit never happen at the same time. It could be very uh, long time uh, after. Of course, more long it is, worse it could be, and more, um, let's say, conflict you could have. So you should be very, very careful on that. So it's the same for the, when we do a, a transaction, full transaction, right? It gets, we do all the statement, it gets replicate, and uh, we commit at, different time. So this is, so when we say synchronous replication, yes, replication is synchronous, but that's the only thing that is synchronous, not everything. So not like when we say MySQL replication is so, because let's say in the past, the replication was, I write data and it's replicated, it's when the data is written <laughs> on the other side, when we say we have a synchronous replication. Here is not the case, right? Just to show you how, how the traditional locking uh, works, so when we have a, on the same machine multiple transactions and uh, uh, we need to wait here because we have a, 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 a lock, right? And uh, on a cluster, distributed system, we don't distribute, or at least not yet, with the Galera version we have until now, we don't distribute the, the locks. So we, they don't know what they are here. They are two different transactions on two different systems and it's only a commit that they start uh, talking together and 
uh, at this time, the second one, so the latest one, will have an error because there is a conflict. But just when after the commit, not before. So here is just some uh, explanation of uh, certification failure, right? So we change same data, we commit here, we synchronous replicated the, the data, certification it's uh, happening on all the nodes, then certification will succeed on the nodes, when it succeeds we go in the queue, right? Everywhere it succeeds, we commit, the commit succeeded here, the data is there, then it's still on the queue to be processed, where we commit here, certification will check with the queue. If there is nothing that has to be uh, applied that could uh, conflict. And here, certification, when it commits, certification will fail. Here, the certification for this will fail also because there is a conflict. Here, it has a conflict because we keep the information we, we have changed. And so, here, certification fail, we're going to return uh, uh, an error. And everywhere, certification will fail. We will not commit the information. And here we got a, a rollback, and we sent to the application. Okay, we have an error. So this is just some uh, slides to explain how all that works, because we have two types of uh, certification issue in Galera: brute force abort and local certification failure. And uh, so this is some illustration on, on how that works. So here you see we. Modify a, a we have a transaction that's open, we modify a data. Here we have the same uh, data that we modify on another node. When we commit it, it gets replicated, it gets certifi certified everywhere. Then when it works, it's applied everywhere. When this one, uh, we will do the next thing we will do here, wha whatever it is, we will have a deadlock coming. The deadlock already happened by this one because he said, oh, I, will, I have to uh, boot for support that transaction, but you will get the answer <laughs> only at the next statement here, not before. And mostly, it's always the commit, and then you get the uh, the error uh, at that time. Okay, but the, um, this this has been already incremented. LCF local certification failure, same stuff. We do uh, you see we do a transaction. We have they are in the queue, they are committed. Then on this one, we replicate. And here, there is a conflict between something that is in the queue. And then we have, again, an error, deadlock, and this is certification failure. Time's up, I know. <laughs> sure, but you know, I wait, I give five minutes to everybody, no, not five, 40 minutes to everybody, I need to recover them. But there is dinner, that's true. Just one thing on flow control. Uh, because you have seen the nodes are not committing at the same time and they can have delay, we need to be able to control that delay. And this is where flow controls uh, happens. And this one, it says, okay, we allow some delay, but not too much either. Because if we, are, if we have a too long delay, we could have more and more conflicts, right? And this is what you need to monitor, in fact, on the, on the Galera node, is that you don't have this flow control uh, going back, right? Uh, so it happens only when the receive queue is higher than the limit that you give for the flow control. And when flow control happens, what, what it really means is that the node will say to the other one, stop processing anything. I need to flush my queue. I still, so I'm too slow. I need to, to do some work and there is too much in my queue. I, I reach the limit. So everybody else will not do anything. So your server is completely <coughs> stalled. You cannot write on the server anymore, right? So uh, if it's too low, you will have flow control coming um, too many times. And so, oh, let's make it very high. But if you put very high, you will increase the conflicts if you write on multiple nodes. So uh, watch out. And, uh, and this will also uh, up increase the <laughs> apply lag because just very fast many stuff uh, uh, when doing the, the certification. So if, the, it, if there is always the same node with flow control, then check what it is. Does it have a bad uh, hardware or the configuration is not the same compared to the other one? So uh, yeah, I will let you uh, show this graph, but you just know that you see this one is not applying anything and he has the limit here and he has the queue. At a certain point, when we reach the queue, it says stop to all the other ones, 
and everybody waits, nothing happens, because they need this one to process the stuff, okay? That's it, do you have question? Yes? No, no, it's deterministic, so it will do on, it, it will do on, on himself, so it does the certification, you see with this queue, for example, you see if there is nothing in the queue that he has not yet processed that could get conflict. And if it passed there, it will pass everywhere. Okay. Because the GTA because, GTA and because we do uh, optimistic uh, replication, let's say like that. So with the, if we pass once, we say it will pass everywhere. And if it fails somewhere, then that node, uh, so for example, it pass everywhere, but one node, that node say, oh, if it, for me, I could not do it, so I have an issue. My data is completely corrupted, and it stopped working. It goes out of the of the group by itself. Okay. Does it open in some way or it no, it goes out, and then uh, you have to restart it or something like that, and then it will, it, it will yes, it will rejoin and get the data. Yes. Um, what about uh, the Yes, yes, by default, yes. And then you have some settings that you can say, depending for inserts, delete, uh, uh, you can say uh, uh, some data that you say, I want, when I want, when I will read data, I want that the queue is processed. It's me, the, the dev manager, but I, I'm the last speaker, my t-shirt is over there. Yeah. He's so. like the man in charge that everyone did on time. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we have the room until seven. No? So, so uh, yeah, you can, uh, but you can play with that and say if I want to read and not and be sure to have the same data, you can say you read only when the queue is uh, it's processed. Another question? Okay, see you at the view. Ah, uh, You can change, you can, uh, on the first version, no, it was just uh, or for everything, and no, you can say for reads, for updates, for deletes, for inserts, for everything you want. And it, it has some increments, so so it's uh, from one to, uh, to six, and one means this, two means that, the three is uh, inserts and delete, and uh, so you can play with whatever you want uh, on, that, uh, on that. Okay, see you at the community dinner. I hope you enjoy.